Hello, my name is David Hillier and I will be giving a short video on the Profitability Index. This comes from my textbooks, uh, either Corporate Finance or it could be from Fundamentals of Corporate Finance. And it is in the chapter on Investment Appraisal. So in Corporate Finance it's chapter 6.7. So the Profitability Index builds on the net present value method and it, quite simply you divide the present value of all the cash flows subsequent to the initial investment by the initial investment itself. So it's a scale measure. It uses the MPV, um, what the methodology would be to get the cash flows, divide by the um, discount rate depending on the, the year in which uh, the cash flow occurs, find the present values and then uh, just divide all of the inflows, those cash flows that take place after the initial investment and divide that by the initial investment itself. So if you look at this particular example here, uh, we've got a 12% discount rate and you can see that there are two projects. We have one project where the initial investment is 20 euros, 20, sorry, million euros. And then we have 70 euros, 70 million and then 10 million euros in the next two years. Uh, we also have project two that's a smaller scale project and it is actually um, uh, half the size. So it's 10 million to start off then you've got a 15 million inflow and then a 40 million inflow. Now if you look at the present value of the cash flows based on a 12% discount rate, you see that project one has twice the net present value as project two. But looking at the profitability index, you see that the profitability index is greater for project two than it is for project one. And that is because it's similar to the issues with internal rate of return where you are getting rid of the scale component. So um, what, what we've got here is we've got a situation where we um, have conflicting advice. Now just to, to find the uh, present value of the cash flows, you would discount each of these cash flows by 12%. And so the net present value all in is 50.5 million euros the, for the project one and 35.3 million euros for project two. Profitability index has some advantages and, and it has advantages when principally when you're capital rationed. That is that you don't have enough money to invest in every single project that is available to you. And so we need to make um, a few adjustments again this chapter and chapter six is about introducing the methods and showing how to use them in different situations. So the capital rationing is where it's the most valuable, but it also comes into its own when you are looking at uh, independent projects and mutually exclusive projects. So let's focus on independent projects first. With independent projects, the appraisal method is the same as you would apply in any other appraisal method that if the project itself has a profitability index greater than one you would accept. If the profitability index was less than one you would reject. Now because these projects are independent it means that if you take one project and you don't you, you can't take the other one. So you as long as each independent project has a profitability index greater than one then you would accept the project. And that is similar to, say, the internal rate of return method, that if the internal rate of return of the project is um, greater than the discount rate, then you should accept the project. And as long as all the projects are independent, then uh, you don't have an issue. Just accept all projects that have uh, or exceed the benchmark criteria. And that applies to profitability index. Once we go to mutually exclusive projects, we may have issues to do with scale. And similar to the, um, the method of uh, internal rate of return, when you have mutually exclusive projects, then what you want to do is you want to find out whether it's worthwhile to invest in a larger project. 
So you can get the internal rate of return for both um, or any all of your projects, but where the key decision is is should you invest in the the larger project or the smaller project? Because um, you can't invest in both of those projects. So what we do is we take incremental cash flows. So you find the internal rate of return of the smaller project, do that as normal, and then you find the internal rate of return of the incremental cash flows. That is the difference in the cash flows between the large project and the small project. You do the exact same with profitability index. You find the profitability index of the smaller project. You then find the profitability index of the incremental cash flows. If the incremental cash flow profitability index is greater than one, then you accept the bigger project. If the incremental cash flows uh, lead to a profitability index that is less than one, then you accept the smaller project. Now, clearly the smaller project has to have a profitability index uh, greater than one in the first place. So that's how you would use profitability index for mutually exclusive projects. And then the last one is capital rationing. Now, capital rationing means that you can invest in all the projects that are available to you. Now, this applies to independent projects. If it's mutually exclusive, you can only do one or the other. But with independent projects, you might have um, a set of money, but you, you can't invest in everything. So you have to decide how, what combination of projects should you invest in. And that's what I'm going to just spend a little bit of time on in this video uh, showing you and showing you how you can use profitability index to do that. So if you look at this set of uh, three projects, you've got 20 million to invest. And so you can invest in project one alone, or you can invest in project two alone, but then you have 10 million left over, so there's no, no value there. Uh, you can pro invest in project three alone. Again, you have 10 million left over because you've got 20 million to invest. But you can also invest in both two and three. And so you want to combine the profitability index of the four choices and also the MPV of the four choices. So let's let's look at this, and we'll, we'll, I'll take you through this in terms of the um, each of the projects. So we have time here, and uh, we can have project. So if we do time zero one two, and then we have project. One, project two, and project three. We have our cash flows as such. Okay, so what is the if we have project one? Do them again. We'll just copy these. Uh, projects 1, 2, and 3. I can have NPV here. And I would have profitability index here. And so we can also have 2 plus 3 here. You can't have uh, 1 plus 3 because then it's 30 million and you only have 20 million to invest in. So the NPV of project 1 is uh, we've got 50.5 and you can see that from the slide here. Project 2 is 35.3. Project 3 is 33.4. Okay. What's the profitability index? 3.53, 4.53 and 4.34. So just with respect to the, both of these, Project 1 looks to be the best, uh, but it doesn't have a good profitability index. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine Projects 2 and 3, and that leads to this cash flow series. So the cash flow series is equal to minus 10 plus minus 10. 
minus 5 plus 15. 60 plus 40. And that is the cash flow series. So we want to find the present values of these. So it's 20 divided by 1 plus, uh, well it's 12%, so I'm just going to say 1.12 to the power 0. Copy this along. So the sum of the present values is equal to 8.92 uh, plus 79. So the profitability index is equal to 88 divided by 20, because that's the initial uh, cash flow. So we've got a profitability index of 4.43. The NPV well, is just a sum of the, the two NPVs. So we, uh, the NPV is equal to 68.7. That's just it's equal to this MPV plus this MPV. So the MPV is 68.7. It's greater than project 1. And the profitability index is 4.43, which is greater than 3.53. So in this particular case, you would say invest in the, um, the second and the third projects together. And that's what you do with capital rationing. You might have... Another um, project that's project 4, and again it's minus 10, you might have 10 and then 30. And then what you need to do is you need to look at all combinations of projects. So you, would, you could have project 1, 2, 3 and 4 on its own, you could have 2 and 3, 2 and 4, or 3 and 4. And you would use the exact same method to uh, find out which combination is the best. So, thank you very much.